By now, almost everyone has heard of Rivian's new R2 and R3 electric cars. And of course, the R3X off-road, a small electric SUV. You know, they look good. But to me, far more interesting is what nobody is really talking about. Rivian's new battery cells. They're very similar to Tesla's 4680 cells. In fact, almost identically, but just a little bit bigger. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Just want to say a big shout out and thank you to everyone who has supported the channel and subscribed. It's great to hit 200,000 subscribers. I really appreciate the support, guys. Okay. Tesla 4680 cylindrical battery cells. BMW then announced last year it would manufacture 4695 cylindrical battery cells, very similar to Tesla's batteries, but a little bit bigger than Tesla's cells. Now, this happened amidst a lot of companies saying, a lot of so-called armchair internet experts saying Tesla's 4680 cells were a disaster, they were never going to work, it was a bad idea. But BMW came along and said, no, 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 they will work. And then a bunch of other companies as well said, yeah, we're going to build similar size cylindrical cells. It's a great idea. Even General Motors have said that they will as well. Interestingly, Rivian are going to manufacture 4695 cylindrical cells, exactly the same size as BMW's standard. And I'm not sure I think this is a great idea. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means the cells have a diameter of 46 millimeters and a height of 95 millimeters, meaning really they are probably about 15% bigger than a Tesla cylindrical battery cell. What chemistry do they use? It's almost certainly not lithium ion phosphate chemistry, which is what I think Rivian should be doing. Rivian are actually going to put lithium ion phosphate battery cells in the cheapest versions of their EVs. The cheapest versions won't use these 4695s. They'll be using lithium ion phosphate. Now, I think that would be better off for all their vehicles, but that's not what Rivian thinks. Rivian believes 4695 cells have a distinct advantage. So what is the advantage? Well, as battery cells get bigger, their voltage doesn't change unless chemistry changes. But Rivian is going to use conventional lithium ion chemistry. Now, what this means is because of the increase in size, larger cells can typically charge and discharge faster. Good for things like performance, right? This means the R2 will likely be able to charge faster and offer more peak power than if it used, say, 4680 cells or 2170s or to be honest, anything else that's out on the market right now. These 4695 cylindrical battery cells will be the biggest cylindrical battery cells used in the automotive industry, but they could potentially have efficiency gains. Some people believe the bigger the cell, um, the cheaper they are to manufacture, and the better it is for packaging. Now, I'm not convinced that's true. I believe it's going to expose some gaps in the pack. And of course, pack energy density um, is very, very important for manufacturing efficiency. If you think about it, right, the bigger the cell gets, the bigger the gap gets in between the cells. But of course, the bigger difference in terms of the size of Rivian cells versus Tesla is not actually in the width. It's actually in the height. So the gap between each cell won't actually increase because um, the width of the battery is the same, 46 millimeters versus four, Tesla's 46 millimeters. It's actually just going to be a taller battery cell. This could have some advantages could have some disadvantages. No one other than BMW is manufacturing these, but some of BMW's contract manufacturers, basically the battery companies that make batteries for BMW, have begun to start putting in place the ability to produce these battery cells for BMW. So maybe Rivian are placing orders with the same companies for basically what is BMW cylindrical cells. Maybe Rivian and BMW have some kind of joint venture here. It seems highly likely, very unusual for a car company to come out and say, we're gonna use the same exact dimensions. This hasn't happened before, as far as I know, in terms of a brand new battery size. Now Rivian is not the first to use 4695s, but it's worth mentioning that Samsung Panasonic and LG are manufacturing 4680s for Tesla, and they could, I guess, possibly make production lines for BMW and Rivian as well. So what we learned from Rivian's presentation, the pack consists of three large modules separated by heavy internal frame rails. Each module is 34 cells wide by eight deep for a total 
of 272 cells. There is an advantage here, guys. This is a very small number of cells. It means there's far less cells that can go wrong. Think about it, right? If you're using, say, 2170 cells, they're half the size. You need twice as many batteries. Therefore, it's more likely that one of those cells will have an issue versus one of the cells in a bigger battery pack. That's one of the big advantages here. If one cell goes bad, then you can easily replace it as well. What this means is that we have a module voltage of 979.2 volts nominal. That's a 1000 volt architecture. So Rivian's new EVs will be using a 1000 volt architecture, which is really quite revolutionary. And it could enable incredibly fast charging speeds. With three of these modules wired in parallel, Motor One says that the voltage will remain the same, but the current available will go up considerably. So what does this mean? Well, 4695s apparently are capable of discharging at up to 10C. That means 10 times their rate of capacity in amp hours. And that would mean for acceleration purposes, they could discharge an enormous amount of power at once, very, very quickly. This would enable you to have a car that has say more than 1,200 horsepower and to discharge that power really quickly, performance would be just insane. Now, at this point in time, we don't know energy density. We don't know the actual chemistry involved. That could change things. We really don't know any details other than what I've shared here, which is the battery size and the pack dimensions and how they're going to go about building these packs. But the chemistry is really the most interesting part, I think. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.